Hello and welcome to Garaf Farms. In today's video, we're going to be opening up the silo. It's definitely time. It's uh, summer here on the farm. And uh, we transitioned from taking out of our uh, bunker pile and uh, into feeding out of our silo during the summer months. And my daddy's headed up there now. He's going to open up the hatch up on top and get some sunlight down in there. We're also going to talk about the history here as the video goes on and uh, the pros and cons of using a silo. Here, hope you guys aren't scared of heights. You're gonna catch this, right? <clears throat> Four doors down, of course, and I got a plastic on this, so we gotta crawl in from the on the inside now we just got some light for ventilation here. A little bit of a view. And then this is our filler pipe and it actually kind of distributes the silage into three piles as it fills. Now this is a 12 by 40. And if you look up, you see where the white checkered blocks are. The white, I think they, the, originally it was a 12 by 30 and then they added on another four doors, which made a 12 by 40. And these, these are solid blocks. At home we had one with the hollow blocks. It was a 12 by 30. And that was the original by the barn. And the only date I got of when this silo could have been put in, and there's the, the silo room is in here. I added on this little nook over the top of it later on, but um, there's a concrete roof in here. It says 1930 on there with the guy's name. 1937, I should say. I would imagine the silo was put up a year, maybe even two years before the silo room. So you're talking the mid 30s sometime, which is a long time for a silo. There was an unloader in here when I bought this farm and it was up on the top, it was an old Pats. And I don't know what year it was and I know it wasn't working right. I know it needed either parts or just to get replaced. But then there was a cable that came down, went through this pulley and then there was some clamps on it. And so what they did after a silo was empty to get the loader back to the top. So you had a tripod on top and they hooked this cable to a tractor and they drove with the tractor slow and that would pull it all the way to the top and then they would move the clamp and reclamp it. And it's kind of a funny story. So I must've been here maybe the second year I was here that I, you know, I always thought maybe I could get that unloader going one day because we didn't have any money. We, we knew we were gonna have to put some money into that loader. And uh, it was all the way down to the bottom late summer i was in there i shoveled that out by hand and uh then i started milking and i had a few dry cows i know out here and then right in the middle of milking time i heard one heck of a ruckus and then this big cloud of dust come out of the silo room and i didn't know what was happening it sounded like an aircraft was running into the barn i mean it was just nuts and so you quick run and investigate and the unloader fell down yeah which um is super common from what i hear <laughs> i mean but you know what triggered it? So I had these dry cows out here and one cow was rubbing her head on the cable. And I mean, to me, the cable didn't look old, but it takes one poor spot. Uh -huh. And the crazy thing, I was just in there like 10 minutes before that. <laughs> so anyway, chop saw went in with a cord and uh, we, we I cut it up and threw it out and lots of good scrap iron is what that ended up being. <laughs> That was crazy. So the end of the unloader, and I don't know, you know, to find an unloader for a silo this small, I think it would be, we've had experience with those silo unloaders at home. So my dad had two silos. We had a 16 by 50 and a, a, a 12 by 30, and, and we filled them just with corn silos. We didn't put no hay in those then. I think to put haylage in that, to shovel that by hand, that's ridiculous. Corn silage ain't too bad. Yeah, silo unloaders can be one of the more dangerous things on a farm. 
At least that's an accident that's pretty common I've heard a lot of when it comes to using a silo and loader. I think the issue comes down to is it's not working right. So you got somebody down putting it on, you're up in there observing what's going on and you don't have a lot of space. You basically have to walk with it. And if any of you know what on loader, it, it, it moves in a circular motion in there and you've got augers and things in there that are, everything about it is dangerous. I mean, yeah, so if you're ever around one, be careful. But this, this one doesn't have one anymore. So. Yeah, it's just not worth the, the expense or, or the headache of keeping it up is what ends up happening. I don't, the longevity of those things isn't very good because of the acidity of the silages. And, and then we only use it in the summer. So if you were to use something like this in the winter with the frozen silage. Yeah, it'd be freezing up and man, well, it could just be a it's like, nightmare. It's like grinding away at concrete. Yeah. That, you know, you, that really takes a toll on these things. I mean, there's not a lot of farms that use them around us yet. There's still some, but so summer feeding, it's pretty forgiving. I mean, corn silage is almost like an oil. So you're, you're not really. Yeah, when we're talking about summer, that's probably one of the pros of using a silo is your silage or your feed is going to keep better during the warmer months because there's less surface area and it's, you know, it's a stone yeah, structure. And, and what, so what we do here, so we have our, like, like you were saying, we have our silage pile and, and we always have some lap over left. So what'll happen is what we must have had, what, 20 feet left there maybe. And then we kind of just push the top off when we run the chopper boxes in there to refill it with the hay. And then we, we cover that. And so the next year we'll start on the opposite end. So we always feed the oldest feed out first. But from this point on, when you start getting humidity, 90 degrees, you can't, with grazing our cows, we cannot keep up feeding that. We end up with more mold than we're actually feeding and I'm sorting that off. Yeah, so then we open the silo. So we just finished uh, our, we hit 60 acres of hay we just put in there a few days ago. I loaded my dump trailer so I had enough for maybe two or three days from that point. Now we're going to be empty by tonight. We get our silo open and uh, ready to go. So that'll be feeding. Now we'll be feeding that all the way until about the middle of September. Yeah. And, and it'll be after our corn silage is in, we feed the top off uh, about, we feed it down maybe two, three, four doors at the most. And then we cap that and we start back into our piles because it's cooler and we're feeding a lot more because of the falls coming on. Yeah, so to simplify that, you know, that talk about spoilage in a silo versus a pile, as a pile you have more surface area that's exposed to the air versus um, a silo. Exactly, and it's not, and, it, and it's very crucial to pack a pile you can't get it packed like a silo can get packed because the weight of the feet actually packs it. So that's exactly it. So your silo is way more forgiving when it comes to molds and stuff. Yeah, like uh, to simplify it even more, the pile would be like a Ziploc bag and then this would be one of those uh, vacuum sealer bags. Yeah, I guess that's that would be a, a way to compare. Now, the only thing with silos is they, they upkeep. Um, you got that on loader if you're using those you know, electricity with that. And then it's, if you have trouble with the machine, it's not like you can just drive it over to the shop and fix it or throw a new one in there in one day. This is a, you're usually um, pockets full of tools climbing. Yeah. yeah, it's all built in and yeah, it's not yeah. very easy to get it, to. It, it's kind of like the barn cleaner system where you just can't take it away, take it uh, to the shop or, or fix it at, at a, in a convenient spot. And it's cold, it's frozen. And, and then if, if you want to shovel by hand because it's broke, now you got this huge machine laying on top of your feet in the way. Yeah. So it, there's a lot to it. So sometimes you have to weigh that out. So, but summer feeding is less wear on those things. I think a lot of guys did that back when the trenches started out. They started to put these uh, trenches in. They were just using their silos over the warmer months or maybe just for their third crop hay or something like that. Because blowing all that feed in there, there's a lot of energy with the price of fuel and, and then it don't, it's not nearly as fast. I mean, we were unloading them chopper boxes. I mean, it just piles out and we yeah. drive on it, pack it in. And... Yeah, that's something we should do this fall, get a video of us filling the silo. Yeah. I think a lot of you would find that interesting. I mean, it, uh... you know, here, what do we got? 13 good full loads of corn silage. We got our full, so it isn't the end of the world to fill this up. But if we had to put, oh, what do we got? Maybe total down there, maybe, oh, there might be 150 loads of stuff down there. And then, yeah. you know, you, you can get these pretty good blowers and thousand RPM blowers, but still, they you still gotta you can't just dump it in. It's it's a lot of energy, a lot of wear to get it all up in there. Yeah, I'd say another pro with a silo versus a pile is this takes up a lot less uh, space. 
a yeah. lot less square footage. Say you had a really tight yard. For example, this is uh, right next to where the cows are coming in. You know, this is right right by the barn here. The, the upside again is, is uh, when we start getting really bitter, um, blizzardy weather, you now we're down there digging like a rat, trying to get that snow out and, and trying to, uh, you know, you're, you're out in the weather and the elements and that too, where if you were set up good with silos and, and some convey equipment by your barn, everything's under the roof. Yeah. I mean, that can be, you know, and even in the muddy months, a lot of guys don't have uh, much concrete under those piles. silage piles. And yeah. <laughs> that can be a quite a, you, you get to be, a, you know, and then you're, you're almost stirring it every day by going in and, and moving feet out of there where, again, then you get more waste. So you're, you get more waste out of a pile, a little harder to manage that way. You can prevent a lot of it. But uh, with a silo, if your silo's tight and you're feeding regularly, it's virtually none. <laughs> this silo room, I mean, it's, it's got a concrete ceiling, and it always makes you think of how they got that all in here. All this concrete was mixed by hand. You got rocks in the walls. And, and I think it was an afterthought after the barn was built. So they got a two-foot wall in the barn. They had to make another hole. And then uh, I'm sure the silo got put up before they put the room in here. They might have went one or two winters without even a silo room. Maybe just shoveling off the ground and, and working around it that way. All right, so we're going to head up the silo and uh, start to open things up. And, and uh, we'll explain once we get up there what exactly we're doing and, uh, and why we got to put in some extra effort when we first open things up here. Now I should have been thinking a little harder. I should have I should have let you go first because I cleaned all the cobwebs out. On the yeah. Way now if we weren't down four doors, I would go up and climb in from the outside, and then the feed you know, or any or some of this stuff that's not so right on top, you throw it on and it kind of sweeps out to shoot for you. And then I've had times when we were only down maybe two doors, so any of the bad feed I could throw out the upper hole falls right down into the barnyard and I can use the bobcat to, to remove that for manure. But we're gonna see what's under here. So this is just basically a scrap piece from the trenches and it's bigger than 12 feet and I just fold it, sometimes I triple it up, but I don't know why once in a while I find a few mice in here that they must climb the silent wall or something, but they, see like there's one. Not surprising. It only takes one or two, but the edges will always be kind of bad. And I don't know, every year's a little bit different. Some years I only get maybe two, three wheelbarrows of, of waste, and then we're good up from there all the way to the bottom. And you're, you're not going to totally ever avoid that. There's going to be some yeah. error that gets, it's like a loaf of bread. You're going to get, you know, yeah. if it sits there all year, you're going to have mold on it. I, I mean, the thing is, is we can't. Because what can we use for weight? So what I do when I cover this, I like to feed it down three, four doors, and so that the feed down three, four doors is quite packed already. And then you'll throw out maybe about two wheelbarrows worth of stuff on top of this plastic, and then some I'll maneuver this plastic and push it around the edges. And then like the trench down there, we can use dirt, yeah. sand. You know, we got other things that we get. But who's gonna carry up something heavy? So now I use the leftover doors that aren't getting used to, for weight to hold this down. Yeah, and then you can see here the mice are chewing on the plastic. Well, that's probably, you know, you get one hole in your Ziploc bag, for instance. It's going to be so, so great. Yeah, there's Typically, we'd only have a little bit around the edges. This this year, I don't know. The mice must have made some holes. It's kind of like down there. You get the raccoons in there. The only difference is we get the waste down there. We can use the skid steer to kind of flip it off to the side. In here, you're stuck shoveling it. Now I got to throw it down, and then of course, 
dump it in the gutter or get it in the spreader somehow. We did something here to refinish the silo. What happens, the silo acid will start to eat away at the concrete. And I had a company come in and they, they put this product called epoxy. I mean, I don't know, back when they built these silos, I'm sure that stuff didn't exist. And if they could have did that right away when they made those silos, I think that would have, you know, you'd kind of like putting a, a good coat of paint on before your material gets decayed or rotted or in the concrete. And then they claim once that silo acid is soaked into the concrete, it's really hard to get something to stick to it and to actually work. We had them more or less seal it because there was a few bad spots and then you could see you'd get a little mold. Wouldn't be much because the feed's packed so tight, but you might get a you know, half a wheelbarrow worth of mold in one spot or another as you're feeding down through. And Silos, they kind of got a shelf life in a way. Yeah. I mean, it's just concrete and the silo acid is what gets the best of them. But I remember back in the early 80s, nobody, I didn't know anybody that put trenches on. Everything was silos, and then the harvester got to be a real big deal, and um, those things. I mean, all I've ever heard about is how expensive they are to keep up. But they, you can get some good feed out of them. I mean, it's, you got different options with that stuff. So, as far as this is concerned, it's here, it's close. Yeah, so then we'll probably feed out, what, about a door a week? I think we're kind of about... Maybe about two and a half feet a week out of this ball footer, which ain't a lot. Yeah, you kind of want to tell them about the doors, how you kind of use them as a, you know, they're a ladder and they're also, you know, so as you work your way down the silo, you can keep feeding it up. Yeah, so your door, and I mean, these are pretty old, but some of them will have a, a strap of iron between here and here. That, that's basically a ladder that fits into those grooves. And, and then you got your latch. And uh, the one thing I always got to be careful with as we're feeding out, that when I switch a door to the next one down, I make sure that latch is, you know, turned in hooks because if someone, like if we'd have to climb up there without any feet in it, the door lets go, you're gonna, you're gonna fall through. I think any type of feed or grain storage, none of that's really the safest. No. Grain bins, it's all. You have to use your head about a little bit. And in here, you know, they talk about silo gases. And the worst cases, I mean, just from what I've heard more, because is high moisture corn. Um, and this being corn silage is, is, uh, is a little more forgiving. For right after it's filled, within a day or two is the worst time. And I could, some years it's worse than others. So if we fill the silo, and it seems like uh, maybe not so much the next morning, maybe the second morning even, um, I know a guy years ago, he used to have the, he, he had his chickens in the silo room for the summer. They filled the silo and then uh, I think the wife was taking care of the birds. She come there like a morning or two later and all the birds are dead from the silo gases. So yeah, but here being a smaller silo, we usually have the top open. Sometimes you run the blower, which is this pipe that comes in and that's basically like a huge fan. And that will run air, fresh air into here. And even now when we're shoveling feed, as he's throwing feed down there, he'll feel like a draft. Now, as that feed is just flying down the chute, it's drawing air with it. And it breaks fresh air in through the hatch up above there. So you're almost creating a circulation, even though the, you know, the air is still outside. So it's something you ought to be aware of because uh, we've heard a few stories with guys that uh, when that gas hits you, you're halfway up the chute, you pass out and you're going to go down tumbling. So that's another downfall of these things. It's just being aware of all those type of things. Yeah, I think last year we were up higher. I could throw it out the top hole. Now, the other thing is, is, is I've heard it happen too, where a guy shovels this huge pile of feed down, then it plugs his hole on the bottom. He can't get out. You know, maybe you got other people around, I guess it isn't a problem. But any of that bench storage stuff like you were talking, that gets to be some serious. But we, we grew up with all this. Me shoveling feet out of a silo, that 12 by 30 dad had, we never had an old motor in there. And I do remember getting him, I think I was maybe only about four years old, he built a larger silo. Got a brand new silo motor in there. I don't think I was even 10 years old yet, which would make it only, I don't know, 
five, six, seven years old, that thing was nothing but problems. It seemed like in the winter months we were just climbing that with tools and replacing parts on there. We had motor troubles and, and I mean, we were young and tough. And then to climb that thing, and we just thought that's just how it is, is what we gotta do. We didn't have no other options. The first silage pile we ever put out in 1986, and I was working for a larger farm, helping him in the fields too, and I was telling him about what we did. And he was, he had a lot of silos, and he, he I always thought those larger farms would probably be a know all about that type of stuff. They didn't seem to know how that would work. They, didn't, they couldn't see putting that larger pile on the ground. You know, there was just, nobody did it yet. And the plastics that were available were all black. And I don't know if they were quite as good or they didn't stretch as good, or if they got a little hail or what, they, they were not as available. So they start out with the black ones and they were actually reasonably cheap. You could, you could probably buy a, oh heck, a 40 by 100 for like $40. Now you're talking, I don't know, what are you now? I think that one down there is maybe four or five, six hundred dollars. I mean, they're just getting, because it's petroleum, it's plastic, it's petroleum, it just drives everything. But, but again, I think far as, uh, so you don't have, so you use a skid steer instead of a silo loader, which, you know, skid steer, you kind of have options. You might have a loader track, you might have a lot of things. If you have problems, you can switch up. So that's where these things have totally almost got thrown away. Big farming is really where it really makes the huge difference. So we're small enough yet, this makes all the sense. I think there's still some of them 500 cow dairies that have a couple of silos and use them. I think up north from us, there's a lot of, lot of dairies about our size that really, uh, and again, it's just, if you, if I believe if I had two or three of these here, I would be using them. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna throw them away, but if, if, uh, if you gotta stick a fortune in them to keep them up, you might be second guessing some of that. I mean, even here around the doors, the concrete, and I don't know why it's on these, it's on this section that they added on these four doors. You'd think towards the top would be better. The ones on the bottom you think would get more acid, but the concrete was chipping away. And this was like that when I bought this farm 30 years ago. To get somebody to fix that would be ridiculous. You know, So you just, um, eventually you may not even want to fill it anymore. But. Right along that door. So then when I'm done with the fork, you don't just do this. You don't want to leave it like that, even overnight. Before the silo gets empty, doing that for about three months, it, it will it will rust the, your fork completely. So I always set my fork up on the door to keep it unexposed. Keeps it from rusting. All right, so we're done up here. We're gonna head down and clean our mess up. I think uh, majority of this stuff we're gonna take out back and um, put it on a pile. And then the next time we load up the manure spreader, it's going on it and it's gonna get spread out in the field, get used as fertilizer. So technically nothing's going to waste. And then um, some of the scraps will just sweep right into the gutter and that will also go out with the manure. So we got the silo all opened up and uh, got our mess all cleaned up. So now there's some uh, good feed ready to go for when dad wants to start feeding out of there. Yeah, I think tomorrow morning I got enough left on the trailer for tonight yet. And then 
Yeah, the thing you don't want to do is first thing in the morning go up there and you got clean clothes on you. Uh, we okay. kind of both smell like the silo right now. Yeah, it's a potent smell. But anyways, uh, we found a cool little piece of history. There's a name written in the concrete there above the silo room. Uh, uh, Louis R. Mish. And uh, May, end of May, May 27th. And I believe 1937. Yeah. And that's really on this barn. I mean, I really don't even know exactly when this barn was built, but that is the, the only date that's in the concrete that's original from the. Uh, yeah. And I we believe he built the silo. And, and it says it, foreman, so I'm guessing yeah that he was. Oh yeah, and he owned this place for a while, so um, that would have been. Uh, and he's got grandkids that are that are around here yet that uh, know that and realize that he was here for a bit, but. So yeah, it's a neat piece of history, and we're uh, grateful that we're still able to use it and put it to use. I'm sure uh, if them guys knew that we were still using it now, they'd be pretty proud of what they were doing when they were building it at that time. I mean, so. it's a long time. And then you think about today, it don't take. It don't seem like it's all that many years, and people are tearing structures down and updating to something completely different or new. It's got to be modern or it ain't good. But anyways, let's cover the common questions we're going to get. So what's the size of the silo again? It's a 12 by 40. Another common question I know we're going to get is how many months out of the year are we feeding out of it from now until about September? Well, so that we're in early June. And again, like we took our hay off. Uh, we covered our trench pile completely. We don't want to be digging in there for the little bit we're feeding now that they're grazing. And so from early June all the way until probably end of September. So, so four, after, four or five months yeah. we're feeding out of it. And that's just corn silage while the cows are grazing. And then another one by people that don't know a whole lot about the industry, uh, what would it cost to put a silo up like this? Are people still doing that? I don't believe so. I don't think. Well, I I know it's less, but I've heard a lot of silos getting taken down and moved. Yeah. Or or they'll use maybe the bottom is is uh, eroded quite bad, so they'll out of two silos they may come up with one pretty good one because your your iron and uh, like the rings that hold it. And, Sometimes the doors are in pretty good shape too. Yeah, I can yeah. I can say what a price would be, and I don't think anybody's building anything like that brand new. But anyways, if you guys have any more questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments. We try to read every single one of them, and we try to respond to them if we can. Um, also, thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe, and um, share it with someone you think might enjoy watching them as well. It, it means a lot to us. Yeah, yeah. And then also, I wanted to take the time, I've already thanked this guy through um, social media, but um, the guy that made these hats for us, he's a viewer, and um, he did a great job. We really appreciate it. He definitely didn't have to go do that, and um, no. yeah, made us a couple of hats, a mug. So um, thank you, you know who you are, and um, anyways. It is kind of exciting to get, and it, it, mean, it means something because if somebody puts that kind of effort towards of yeah. recognizing your channel, and. And what we do out here it says something yeah it means a lot to us but anyways thank you all for watching and we'll see you in the next video